Um, we don't have an official, like, who wants to go first for the speak-off. Uh, Leah's doing a nose-goes thing. Um, Lisa's doing the nose-goes thing, sorry. You said, right, you're sitting right. <laughs> well, yeah, so sorry. Um, is there anybody who would like to go first? Okay. Team, otherwise known as the Blades and Outlaws. <laughs> so I came to this camp not knowing what to expect, like at all, and completely dreading it. I mean, I walked into my cabin, otherwise known as the shack. Picture this: ten girls in like a box with like five girls on the floor. I thought this was going to be one of the worst weeks of my life. And then I met my team. Despite our first impressions, I do grew to love this team. We became a family this week. And from building rafts and just wanting to give up to dominating in volleyball and becoming undefeated, Woo! these Woo! people taught me how to serve a volleyball and hit a softball, which I would say is possibly the hardest task of life. And although we have been through a lot of tension and problems, we overcame them and came to work as a team. Us as a team have grown so much in the last few days. We learned how to communicate with each other and listen to what each other had to say. I can say that Ryla taught me a lot. To not judge a book by its cover, I just remember one, walking up to the Orange team and thinking, what have I got myself into? But truly, these are the nicest, sweetest, and most genuine people I've ever met. I, <laughs> and I don't know what I would have done without them. I couldn't have asked for a better group of people, and I'm so proud to call them my family. And yes, I know that sounds really corny, but they have helped me through so much, and so much that I wouldn't call them anything else. These people I've met here will remain in my heart forever, even the people that aren't in my group. I've made so many new friends that I will definitely remember forever. At the beginning of this week, all the counselor kept saying, you will be a different person by the end of the week. And honestly, I just thought they were crazy. But I can now say that I am a different person. Ryla taught me so many leadership skills that I will carry on forever. And I can say this has probably been one of the best weeks of my life. I had so many fun experiences from Rihanna drenching me in water in the canoe <laughs> to freaking out before I did the power pole. And none of us can forget today in the woods. <laughs> Although it was extremely challenging, like very extremely challenging, I still feel like my team grew closer. We were all hot and sweaty and miserable and probably going mentally insane, but we got through it as a team. And in other words, those counselors were right. Camp Rolla really changed his lives. And I got the experience, to experience that within me and my teammates. So thank you, Rotary, for this opportunity. Thank you, campers, for never providing a dull moment. And most of all, I say thank you to my teammates for accepting me and forming a family with me. And last but not least, thank you, counselors, for giving up your time and making this possible. But I just have one last question for all you campers. How are you doing tonight? <laughs>
for my Pink Panther. <laughs> this is we awesome for the rest of the campers. <laughs> Dear Camp Myla, the obstacles we overcame together was very extraordinary. From the volleyball wins and losses, which vary, to the softball, oh so daring. Next we face the raft of the raft. Venturing far and beyond into the pond, which is a man-made craft. Canoeing, pulling us together in the sun burning hot weather. Now let's go back in time to the very first day you and I came to become one, Mr. Ryla. I pulled into the parking lot, leaving everything I knew a mile way behind. Putting majority of my trust in you, not really knowing what to do. Meeting and greeting someone new, being forced to combine eating one to make two. Something totally out of the blue. Fast forward into time, which took place throughout the week. Sitting, trying to be patient, while watching and listening to other leaders speak. Also leadership activities that expose the point as to where we may have fallen the week. Just to name a few, Pictionary, The Dog Catcher, and Lost at Sea. Going back to Monday and Tuesday. Oh my gosh, man, am I happy those horses didn't pee. <laughs> While outside, I'm so happy we all listened when told to put on sunscreen and bug repellent, trying to be the best team with our colors being pink, orange, blue, yellow, and green. I'm sure we all enjoyed serving our fellow campers, hosting and greeting line one cabin at a time. Feeling surprised from the yelling and screaming from the road course. I'm surprised we all didn't get hoarse. We bonded and met new friends, hoping this week would come to a very slow end. Some may have faced their fears they've been holding on to over various years, as well as others tremendously growing. Mr. Ryla, I would like to thank you for all that you will and already do. We all love you. With all our love, Pink Panthers. Honestly, say that my high expectations 
were exceeded beyond my wildest imagination. With my ability to do the things I love, threatened by something I possess no control of, I arrived Sunday scared, vulnerable, and unsure of myself or my future. I am now leaving confident, courageous, and reassured. I was reminded that I can overcome any obstacle. All of those accepted in this program have already exhibited leadership skills in their everyday lives. However, Camp Ryla teaches us how to channel these skills into action. They taught us lessons that most people don't learn without years of real life experience. One of the first lessons is that failure is giving up, not the number of times a plan doesn't work. One of the challenges this week was rafting. Your team was stranded on an island with a volcano about to blow. With the given resources, each team was instructed to craft a raft to carry each member to safety in as little time as possible. Sounds simple, right? Wrong. We tried plan A, then plan B, then plan C, then plan D. As DD, designated dummy, the only thing to stay above the water was my hat. Even though it took longer than expected, we did not fail because we didn't give up. It is because of that perseverance that we were rewarded with a, with a successful raft that we were proud of. Another common element, element throughout this week was to think outside the box. Often we allow our mind to restrict what is possible by limiting ourselves to boundaries that don't even exist. Whether it's solving a puzzle, brainstorming, or accomplishing a simple task, one, uh, <laughs> one leadership activity we did was to think uh, was to link nine dots in the shape of a box together with four lines without lifting our pins. In order to accomplish this, one must literally think outside of the box. This type of innovative thinking is vital to the success of any leader. Lastly, I believe wholeheartedly that each camper learned not only the value of a team, but the skills needed to be a productive member of one. This week we started as strangers, then became acquaintances, then friends, and now we're a family. A dysfunctional family, yet a family nonetheless. That's bonded so closely that leaving our new family will bring tears from all of its members when the time to leave comes. No more was this exhibited than at the ropes course. With this scheduled at the end of the week, we had already learned new skills needed to be a leader. The ropes course was designed to challenge what we learned individually. Fear was not absent when asked to jump off a pole or climb a tower, yet I was amazed at the courage shown by individuals confronting their fears. However, even though I'm an adrenaline junkie, my favorite and most treasured moment was watching someone I am blessed to call a friend climb the rock wall. It is the epitome of everything we learned at this camp. It was difficult for her, yet she still gave it all she had when she fell, she would try again. Even when most people would have given up, she kept going. She exhibited individual courage, determination, perseverance, and strength to the highest degree. She never gave up. I am so proud of her. And I can only hope that one day when I'm climbing my own wall, that I have an ounce of that perseverance. What was just as amazing to be a part of was cheering her on from the bottom. Even though this was designed to challenge the individual, there was a support system at the bottom, encouraging and offering instruction. We were there for her and always will be. Now that it is the end of the week, it's time for us to take our new skills and turn them into action. It's time to go back to the real world, and even though the bug bites, scratches, and sunburn won't last, the memories and the lessons will never be forgotten. I thank each of you for being a part of it and helping me grow. Thank you.
blue and pink. Who else? Orange. Orange. So we need yellow. 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 Come on, Tay.
my name is Shiva Blinker and I'm representing the green team. <laughs> Camp Rayla has taught me and my team many lessons, but before I go into that, I'd like to start off saying that I think that my team was one of the most awkward teams in the beginning. <laughs> We did not sit together, we did not talk to each other, we didn't even come up with a name for the first few days. In the beginning, half of us were like, we want to be the Green Lantern, and the other half wanted to be like the mutated iguanas. We were so disorganized that we felt like we had nothing in common. And me personally, I wish I was on the pink team or the orange team. Because I felt that with our team, we wouldn't be able to win anything. We'd come in last every single time. And I was just like, I'd like to win. Because, you know, we're here to win, right? So we were very disorganized in the beginning, but finally we met on a common ground at volleyball. Even though we didn't have very many athletes, we still helped each other. We created support groups. We, we motivated people no matter how badly they hit because they at least attempted. <laughs> we had some people who had never served. One team member served for the first time and he got his 13 points in a row and he won us the game. <laughs> After that, we became like a family. We always sat together at the table. We made sure there was no white space left on the table so that everybody could fit in. We made sure that we helped each other keep going no matter how bad things got. After that, we still wondered, we're not winning anything. We maybe have won like two volleyball games, <laughs> one softball game, and that was about it. And shouldn't it, shouldn't it be our goal to win everything? Isn't that what leaders are supposed to do? Shouldn't they be number one? Shouldn't they be the best at everything? But we learned that over time that that's not what a real leader is. These are mental barriers that we create for ourselves. And in order to become better leaders, we have to break down those barriers. It's not always about winning. In fact, it's better to lose because when you lose, you learn a lesson. When you win, you can become arrogant and that's, that's kind of bad. <laughs> There are also other mental barriers that we all faced. One of them being fear, some of them being that we're not, we're afraid that we're not gonna be competent enough, like for the rope course. We had one girl who got all the way to the top of the mountain climbing, and she could not get a foothold to push herself to the top. And at that time, she was like, I can't do it, I can't do it, you guys gotta pull me down. But we were like, no, we did not get you all the way up there for you to just come all the way back down. And we supported her until she found the strength inside of her to come out, to go to the top, and to be number one. Overcoming all of these mental barriers are important for a leader, and Camp Ryla has helped us significantly decrease all of these barriers. One girl, I remember at the beginning, whenever she was presenting the awards for the awards committee, she would look straight down at the podium and she would not look at anybody. She would mumble into the microphone and she was just very awkward. <laughs> but now whenever she goes to present her words, she speaks clearly, she makes eye contact and she has great posture. And she has come out of her shell and she was super quiet at the beginning of the week. Now she yells green machine. <laughs> In the beginning, our team thought that we were the underdogs, that we would never become first, but Camp Rayla has given us all the skills that we need. It has helped us realize that we need to keep ourselves going even in the toughest times, and it has given us the energy to keep going. And because of that, we've risen from the underdogs all the way to the top in our minds. Even if we have not won first place in everything, in our hearts, we are number one. And Camp Ryla has given us the skills to become leaders for not just our generation, but for the whole world.
you guys have a seat and we're going to vote on who you think should be the winner of the speak off. Now, this isn't a team competition, it's about who you think best describe the experiences at Camp Ryla. Okay? So, we're going to give you a few minutes to pass out some pens and some pieces of paper. And when you're done, I want you to turn them in to either me, Steve, Kyle, Beth, or Lisa, or Miss Angela. Huh? So remember the speakers were Ranjane, Lisa, Shiva, Tay, and I heard Nicole, sorry. Alright, we're going to give you about three-ish minutes, okay? 